Hey everyone, my name is Dave, and today I want to talk about Ben Beal. I'm diagnosed with ADD, and it's my signature. I'm taking out a roll and roll a switch. Up is typical, I'm miserable. I'm seeing stars in class, but I wasn't taking astronomy. Ben Beal is one of the most popular lo fi hip hop rappers and has collaborated with the likes of Code of the Friend, Mick Jenkins, Love's Hat Kid, and basically every other lo fi hip hop artist. After being in Ben's top 0.1 for basically two years in a row, I've started to pick up on some very cool things that Ben tends to do in his music. Although Ben does produce some of his tracks, not all of them are produced by him. I will try my best to appropriately credit the producers. One of the first things I noticed when listening to Ben's music is that there's almost always this double kick, or at least that's what I like to call it. Let me show you what I mean. Ever since I heard Dilla for the first time, I knew that shit was okay. I wake up tired as fuck and my class already happened. So to do this, what I like to do usually is I put in my kicks, as usual with the pattern, and then anytime I, f I feel there could be a double kick, I add it. Now usually you would add it on the grid here, but I like to just drag it. You hold alt plus left click and you just shift it a little to the right and it gives it even more bounce. And now, if you also notice, there's this muted note here. And so what this muted note is doing is it's shutting off the sound of this kick. And how do you do that? You right click on your kick and you make sure you select cut itself. That way, anytime a kick triggers, the kick is going to cut itself and allow the other kick to go. So if you put a ghost note, so a note with like no velocity, this kick is gonna get cut even shorter. And for me, that makes it feel even bouncier. Also, lastly, if you notice, the velocity of my ghost kick or my double kick is also uh, lowered. This also helps add to the bounce because watch, if we have the velocity on the same one, I personally think it sounds much better and much more natural if you lower the velocity. Another thing I noticed while listening to Ben's music is how he also likes to play around with the snare patterns. Usually, snares will always hit on the 2 and the 4. There's nothing wrong with this pattern, it works perfectly fine, but as lo-fi tends to be very repetitive, a nice, low-effort way around this is to remove some snares. Alternatively, you can also add snares in the 1 or the 3. This technique is probably the easiest to implement as you literally just have to go to your snare pattern and remove one snare. Now obviously, do listen to your beat and try to imagine where uh, removing a snare could work nicely. I thought that removing this snare and sustaining this chord specifically with no snare um, added a lot to the beat. Let me show you what I mean. Finally, another thing that really caught my attention about Ben's production is how he plays with the bass. Usually, the bass will hit on the one, along with the kick. However, by delaying the bass, you subvert the listener's expectations. So when the bass does hit later on, it's much more impactful and can lead to some very interesting rhythms. Uh, the blue planet. Can I spin you around? If I do, I hope the water falls onto the ground. Alternatively, if delaying the bass doesn't work out, what you can instead do is give the bass a sense of anticipation. Notice how right before the bass hits in this example, a new shaker comes in and catches our attention just to be completely muted, making the bass fully shine. It's almost as if the producer is guiding our ears and showing us where they want us to be focused. So I very quickly made a very normal bass pattern to show you guys what this sounds like. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with this pattern, but I'm showing this so that you guys can hear the difference between a normal bass and a delayed bass. So that's definitely fine, but if we get the same pattern 
but just scoot the note over a little bit in some areas and add some little fills, um, it can sound like this. And then if we also get the technique that we learned with the anticipation and add a simple perk loop and cut off the guitar in some parts to really accentuate the bass, it sounds something like this. Once again, my name is Dave. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoy these videos. I love making these types of analysis and I really hope I can teach you guys a thing or two. All my socials and my Spotify will be linked down below if you guys are interested in following me or listening to my music. And make sure to comment below who you would like to see me analyze next.